Visit sailright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant from Sailrite. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to sew binding around a 90 degree outside turn without having to cut it with a hot knife and how to go around an inside 90 degree turn. And we're going to use Sunbrella Marine Grade Bias Binding for this and we're going to use an ultra feed sewing machine, whether it be the LSZ or the LS. Let's get started. Okay, we're cutting our Sunbrella Marine Grade fabric with a hot knife, mainly because a cut edge with a hot knife is sealed and if the stitch falls close to that edge, it doesn't easily fall out. You don't have to use a hot knife, but we recommend it when doing binding so that you get the optimal uh, edge. So we're using the Sayerite one inch swing away binder and we can do 90 degree turns with this without cutting the binding. This is a one inch Sunbrella binding and it's a bias binding. So what I like to do is I like to just lower the foot and I like to sew a little bit and then I like to sit, put my uh, piece of fabric in. So we're going to sew up to this 90 degree turn, making sure that our fabric's well within the binder. And then when I get to the edge, right there, I'm going to do one stitch in reverse twice. So one forward, there we go. So I only did a little bit of reversing. Now, lift your foot and pull the binding out of the mouth of the binder and pull out about 12 inches or so, okay? So now we'll take this and we'll cut our threads. So instead of cutting our binding, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crease it over and create kind of like a 45 degree miter. Now it's not a perfect 45 degree. We're doing it on the uh, top side and the back side. So I'm going to try to position this in a place so you can see it. And so you want it to look good and it won't go all the way to the corner, it typically doesn't, and you want this to be centered over the edge of the fabric like it is. Okay, so once you have that done, uh, and you've creased it well with your fingers, because this is a very thick assembly and it's a bump, it needs to be compressed, because it, it'll skip a stitch if you don't. So what I usually do is I use vice grips, and I actually do it to the point where it's really gripping the fabric well, and I do it a couple times. So there's one time. And then we'll set it back up again, right where it was. It's gonna crease right where it was easily because it's already got a memory from being crimped with the vice grips. I'm gonna do it there. And I'll probably do it one more time here where I'm gonna be stitching and make sure that I've got good tension. That's good. Now that'll help it to sew without getting a skip stitch because this is, again, a sewing machine uh, sewing over a bump like this and this thickness could cause issues. So now make sure it's centered again on the edge, right, like that, and we're going to do this by hand. We're not going to use the binder yet. So we're going to put this under the presser foot, and sometimes you can use a tool to kind of position this under here, and we want to stitch kind of right where the other stitches started. So that's about right. I'm going to lower the needle and before I penetrate the material, I'm going to lower the foot. Okay, so now I've got the stitch right where I want it. I'm going to hold a little bit onto my trailers and I'm going to roll the balance wheel by hand to bury that needle at that spot. And I'm going to do one stitch rolling the balance wheel by hand. And then uh, notice I penetrated, the needle's coming out. I'm going to have the needle almost go in again right there. And now I'm going to lift the foot. So the needle's not penetrated the fabric. And then I'm going to roll or push the fabric back and I'm going to enter that same hole that uh, we started with right, see right there. And I'm going to penetrate it and lower the foot. Don't forget to do that. And we're going to do that one more time. So basically I'm creating a reverse, but since it's so thick, I'm kind of doing it by hand. Let's do it one more time. Penetrate that same hole, lower the foot. Now I'm going to press on the pedal and I'm going to keep the needle buried and now I'm going to feed my binding through the mouth of the binder and push it back up so that I can now sew whatever length that I need to sew with the binder which makes it nice and easy. So push this all the way up and now feed your fabric into this opening. 
Okay, and that's a 90 degree outside turn. Now let's concentrate on an inside turn. So when I get to the inside turn, I wanna stop a couple inches from the edge of the binder right here. So this is about two inches approximately. And I wanna cut a slit. So I've got my scissors here and I wanna do a 45 degree slit or a miter, but not cut it too deep. So right there. And then I cut one uh, par parallel to this edge, not too deep right there, and then a, th a third one parallel to the opposite edge. Okay, so that's basically three little slits. So now what I'll do is I'll feed this in, keeping the fabric well into the binder, very important. And when I get to that part that has the inside 90 degree turn, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the fabric so it's straight, because you can actually do that. So see how the fabric is nice and straight? So now feed it into the binder, making sure that you're pushing it into the mouth, because if you don't, you're gonna miss your fabric. And don't worry about this wrinkle here, that's required. When I get up to that wrinkle, which is right there, I'm gonna bury my needle, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this back this direction, which basically removes that wrinkle. Now see my fabric's not in there, so I'm gonna take a tool and push it in there because I can see where it, where it was, and I will sew this direction now. Now we'll do some reversing, and we've done both an outside 90 degree turn and an inside 90 degree turn. Now see this wrinkle right here? That's expected. The fabric has to shrink up here. Sometimes it's rolled up like that, sometimes it's just pushed down, but we did it. And let's cut this and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here it is on the back side. Now I use black thread so that you can see exactly what it looks like, and that looks good. If I look at this 90 degree turn, see it looks like we have a loop. Sometimes what you can do is take your trailing threads that are here and you can pull and that fixes that loop. If it's loose on the top, you can pull on this one. That is a 90 degree turn without having to use a hot knife. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.